Good morning, Hope Seekers, and welcome to Cup of Hope. Grab your cup, let's fill it up with hope today, and leave here full and overflowing with hope and ready to uh, just sprinkle hope wherever we go, or even if we're at home within our homes, because um, we do have the promise of the hope of Christ uh, anytime we go to His Word. And anytime um, his word tells us that when we ask and we are seeking, he will surely give to us what it is that we are looking for and need. And um, I just want to kind of refresh today a reminder of why in the world am I doing Cup of Hope? Why, why am I here with you morning by morning? Good morning, James. Um, why am I here doing this? And it is really because God has laid two things on my heart. Um, one, well, three things actually. One is that we are in desperate need as, as a nation and as the world um, for, for hope. The second thing is to bring comfort to those who need to be comforted. Um, and then the third thing that God has really laid on my heart is to disrupt those who are comfortable. So um, a lot of times as the church, we've gotten into this place of being very complacent. Um, we are, good morning, Courtney. Um, we are in a place of just, uh, yeah, being comfortable in the places that God has us and, um, and really being ineffective because we're comfortable. And so God is asking me to, to come to you morning by morning and to stir up uh, in you the desire for more of him not that the desire for more of him is mine to give you but to just um pray over you every morning that the holy spirit would move in your life and that he would draw you closer in that he would give you the comfort that you're looking for or disrupt your comfort comfort for him um so this last couple of weeks we've been in the book ascent to know him which is an eight-week devotional that i wrote uh, as a, to help develop quiet times and in in a pattern of quiet times in, in the lives of, of believers. And um, so we're in week two. This is day five. Happy Friday. And to, this whole week we've been talking about the wisdom of God. Today we're going to look at how he is wise and planning. And I'm approaching this from a different angle because a lot of times in the church we talk about, you know, about God's plans and his plans are perfect and and that is often hard for me to get my mind around, especially in times of uh, difficulty and when we're struggling with loss or sickness or um, just hard things in our life. So that always understanding that God is wise and is planning is is sometimes just, just hard to think about. Um, but today I, I want us to focus on Second Peter 3, 9, and I'm going to be reading from the complete Jewish Bible. Second Peter 3, 9, which says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises, as some people think of slowness. On the contrary, he is patient with you. For it is not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed, but that everyone should turn from sin. Something struck me about this verse that I was not um, aware of, I guess, before I hadn't really thought about. But this comparison between the Lord being slow is really his patience. Um, his slowness is, to us, what looks slow is really his patience with us. Uh, and so this kind of kicked me back on my heels a little bit this morning as I was reading this and thinking, wow, how many things have I been praying for or hoping for or, you know, uh, just asking God and believing God that really it's his patience on display, that his desire for me is greater um, than this one thing that I'm asking for. His patience with me is greater and, and bigger than I can even fathom or imagine because it's bigger than this one little thing that I'm asking for or, or my heart's desire for myself. And I believe, okay, God, I'm, I'm praying your promises. I know that this is true. And so what is it that 
maybe he's trying to work out in us because he doesn't want to destroy us. So he knows that if he, if he answers his promise right here and right now, something else may fall apart and be destroyed because I'm not ready to handle the promise that he has for me at this moment. He hasn't built me up yet enough. I haven't grown enough. I haven't surrendered enough in order for him to just hand over this promise to me. His promise is true and he will absolutely fulfill it. There's no question of that, but it really, um, it's more about me working out my willingness to surrender to whatever it is that he's asking me to surrender to. The other thing I think that his promises are connected to that we sometimes miss is how connected his promises are. That this promise, it's not about me. It's not about just me and, and, and my own surrender. It's about how many other people and, and things that my life is connected to. And so when I choose to surrender to God and his promise and to his plans, what else is that releasing and, and giving others the platform to do what they need to do? And <laughs> so slowness is an interesting construct in God's timing, right? Because God is not bound by our time. And the verse even says that God is not slow in keeping his promise as some think of slowness. Slowness is his patience on display. And that's really what I want us to, to just sit and dwell on this morning is when I think God's being slow, it's really his patience. And I want, I, I get, you know, in a tizzy with things sometimes because um, I'm a planner. I, I love strategic planning. I love knowing where I'm going. I love connecting all of the dots. I love seeing how... Um, things will look <laughs> in the future as, as I, I think I know that they will look. But having a plan and a strategy is also a security. Um, it's also a secure place for me. Uh, just having a plan, it, it helps me to feel like I'm in control. And so I'm going to, this is the, the, what God is asking me to do. It's to release those plans to him to let go of my strategy, to let go of what I think he's wanting to do and to let him do it. But it, that requires me to be in total and complete surrender, recognizing that I don't, I don't have to have all the answers saying oh, I don't know is okay. Um, one of my dear friends, actually two of my dear friends have uh, an organization called Bloom in the Dark and they help um, really any shame-based topic they talk about. Uh, and they have a program called Recovery Strategies for Life, but one of the acronyms that they use in their ministry is SLOW. And it's Stop, Listen, Obey, and Worship. So it also, when I th read this verse, it reminds me of that, that when God is slow in responding to his promise, it's his patience, but he's also asking me to stop to listen, to obey, and to worship. And yes, Paula and Jenny, I am stealing your material this morning. So I hope that you're watching this and that um, that you, I know, would anyway give all the glory back to God for helping you come up with that acronym. But um, it's just so amazing to me what God is doing, that he is slow in, in answering our promises, but it is for our own good. Uh, slow in answering his promises because it is his patience that is being worked out and that he is wise beyond our ability to understand his planning. And so I want to pray for you and pr for me in all honesty and sincerity <laughs> um, that our speed to surrender is shortened, that our willingness to surrender is shortened. And, um, and to help us understand that he's indeed protecting us. He's indeed protecting us um, by being slow or being patient with us because he doesn't want to destroy us by giving us a, a, something that's too good too soon. And so can we trust him? 
Are you guys willing to trust him in the way that he's asking you to? Are you willing to surrender to him in a different and new way? That is so scary. I know it's so scary. So let's pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I just come before you as we read over this verse from 2 Peter 3, 9. That says that you are not slow in your to um, give us your promises, as slow, some understand slowness, but it is really your patience. Slowness that looks like, when it looks slow to us, it's really your patience on display. So Father, I pray that you would help us to surrender more quickly, more willingly, so that we can see your presence and your, um, your promises at work in our lives. Father, would you teach us to surrender more quick, quickly? God, I pray over each and every one who is watching today. Lord, you have taken us on a journey this week of uh, showing us your wisdom. Lord, I know that you have so much in store for us. God, I know that our lives are so intricately connected and that when I surrender, it gives someone else the ability to surrender too. And that um, your promise is not just about me. But you are so good to protect us. You are so patient with us because you know that if you gave us something that we aren't ready for, it will, it will destroy us. So Father, I pray that uh, we can just come to you humbly asking you, what is it that you have for me today? What is it that you have for me today? What promise do you want me to rest in today? Knowing full well that all of the promises are for, for me and are for us. But what is it that you have for me today? And I humbly come before you this morning in complete and total surrender saying, God, have your way in and through my life. Lord, I pray that as these words go out and as this verse is lived out, in my life and in the lives of those who are watching and who are willing to step in into this place of surrender. God, I just thank you for your goodness. Be with each and every one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you uh, today. Thank you for joining me and for watching me. And um, we'll be back together next week on Monday, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, as my granny would say. Uh, in Ascent to Know Him, we'll be in week three, and we are talking about the God of faithfulness. The God of faithfulness. It's going to be a great week. I can already feel it, because God is so faithful. Have a great day. Bye-bye.